<coughs> poetry and music. This um, uneasy marriage of the arts has caused a lot of controversy for a long time. Many opinions are for, many against. We leave you to judge for yourselves. What we're going to show you is a visualization and musification of a poem of a young poet, John Lennon. And the poem is called, quite simply, Deaf Ted, Danuta, and Me. <coughs> Hilly grow and burly eye, big dailies, grass and tree, we clobber ever gallop, deaf Ted, Danuta and me. Never shall we partly stray, fast stirrup, all we three, fight the battle, mighty sword, deaf Ted, Danuta and me. <laughs> With faithful frog beside us, big mighty club are we. The battle scab and frisky dyke, deft head, Danuta and me. <laughs> <laughs> we fight the baddie baddies for color, race, and creed. For Negro, Jew, and Bernie, Deaf Ted, Danota, and me. Fork Billy Groves and Burnley Ten and Aston Villa Three. We lover ever gallop. <laughs> And me. So if you hear a wondrous sight and blutter or at sea, remember <laughs> the mighty say, Deaf Ted, Danuta, and me. Sometimes we bring our friend Malcolm. Now, before the film, uh, that is after it, or to put it another way, during it, um, let us hear a few words about the awful. I was bored on the 9th of October, 1940, when I believe the nasties were still booming us, led by Madolf Hitlump, who only had one. Anyway, they didn't get me. I attended to varicose schools in Liddypool and still didn't pass much to my auntie's supplies. As a member of the most publified Beatles, my and PG and R's records, might seem funnier to some of you than this book. But as far as I'm conceived, this correction of short Richie is the best laugh I've ever read. God help and breed you all. As you can see, diction is very important. <laughs> and the awful has several interesting, or conversely uninteresting, hints to offer. <clears throat> all aboard speeching. Speak you clear and nasal for distance. Ron cordially begs to inform, ma'am, all is forgiven. Now, many people express great height with the word, ma'am. <laughs> Sing you with long voice. For discharge, deep breathing is Nescafe for a dark voice. Deep breathing and inhaling is very impotent for broadcastle and outlying aerial. <laughs> Visibility nil in Rockall and Fred Astaire. Practice daily, but not if you're deaf and dumb. For example, the word phonetically wrote must be charged grammatically with vowel pronounced strangly. E.g. While talking on you, my Ivans are getting cold, and you know as well as I do that we must strive the Ivan while it is hot. <laughs> Regard the Knox fan, they speak Avon. But in Cane Bilge, or even. The vowel thus dressed pronounced. 
practice Davy, but not if you're Mutton Jeff. <laughs> and now, another poem, Good Dog Nigel. Half half he goes, a merry sight, our little hairy friend. Half half upon the lamppost bright. Half in round a bend. <laughs> nice dog, good boy, waggy tail and beg. Clever Nigel, jump for joy. <laughs> because we're putting you to sleep at three and a club, Nigel. <laughs> Thank you for that performance, Nigel. Um, and now, unhappy Frank. Unhappy Frank. Frank looked at the table, hardly daring to look at the table. I hate that table. He said. <laughs> Bloody owl table in my house. Then he looked at the clock. Damn that clock in my house. Said Frank, for it was his house, you know. After a little bit, his eye came across his very mother's chair. Don't like that chair one bit. He showed it. Just look at all that garbage, all filby and derby. How am I supposed to look after all this garby ruddish? What am I but a slave to look upon with Dissica Freebit, all the peagle laughing and buzzing me in front of all the world? How can I but carry on? How? Have I but no life of my own to do but what I must ever jug gleaning and look after these damn old house of my own? Frank went over to his dub old mother, whom was stickle living with him. <laughs> what are you laughing at, you dub old boot? <laughs> Haven't I enough trouble without you catting in the corber? With that, Frank, stub up and kicked her plainly in the head. <laughs> Take that for laughing, you bud old griff. <laughs> I ate that boot. He said, smiling quirkily to themselves. I'm going to sell this daft shed and you too as well also, mummy. <laughs> so he sold it all and left the country and settled down in another country, which he did not like half as much as his dear old home in England with his dear old, quaint, old lovely mother, what he... Um, uh, Frank. Frank, thank you. Uh, lost due to a bad harvest, which Judd goes to show what happened. Finally, the awful himself with the wrestling dog. The wrestling dog. Once upon a time in a far off distant land, far across the sea, miles away from anyway, over the hills as the crow bark. <coughs> 39 people lived miles away from anywhere on a little island on a distant land. When harvest time came along, all the people celebrated with a mighty feast and dancing and that. It was Perry's. So Perry was the loud mayor. Job to provide. And Perry's great pleasure, I might add. A new and exciting. And usually it was. Thrill and spectacular performer. Sometimes a dwarf was used. This year Perry had surpassed himself by getting a wrestling dog. <laughs> but who would fight this wondrous beast? I wouldn't for a kickoff. Wouldn't get me fighting it, Dudley. Uh, Mr. Oh. John Lennon. Oh. the time to say goodbye now is the time to yield a sigh now is the moment to wend away Goodbye, goodbye, we're leaving you. Goodbye, we went to my goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye, thank you very much, Mr. Professor Bruce Lacey. Goodbye. And of course, Mr. Norman Rockley with a keen steeple. Thank you very much, dear. Now we're going to And of course, the book writing beetle, Mr. John Lennon. And of course, the star of our show, Miss Diane Carroll. 